Welcome to the Cardiothoracic Unit at the Heart and Lung Centre in Wolverhampton, UK. Today the team will be demonstrating a lung lavage procedure. The patient is a 64-year-old male who was initially referred for lung biopsy on a background of increasing shortness of breath. He had worked in a foundry for 40 years and was an ex-smoker. Preoperatively, he was polycythemic and hypoxic. Radiological tests showed parenchymal lung disease and left lung biopsy confirmed pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. He was thereafter admitted for staged lung lavage procedures, starting with the left lung and a few weeks later the right lung. Patient was given the usual thromboprophylaxis pre-op. Cardiovascular monitoring was achieved via internal jugular vein access and radial artery cannulation. Total intravenous anaesthesia was achieved with propofol and remifentanil and rocuronium was used as a muscle relaxant. Intubation was carried out using the largest possible double lumen tube. Usual antibiotic prophylaxis was used and no crystalloid maintenance intravenous fluid was used during the procedure. Optimal blood pressure maintenance was titrated with noradrenaline infusion. Following transfer to the operating theatre, the position of the double lumen was confirmed by fibre optic bronchoscopy. The patient was positioned with a 15 degree head up tilt and the non-lavage but ventilated side of the chest was propped upwards using a pillow under the shoulder to prevent the spillage past the endobronchial tube cuffs. At the start, both lungs were ventilated with 100% oxygen for the first 7-10 to 10 minutes to denitrogenate the target lung. Then the target lung was isolated and the non-lavage lung was ventilated with 100% oxygen initially and then the FiO2 was reduced to keep the peripheral oxygen saturation above 90%. Sterile warm saline at 37 degrees centigrade was instilled via a standard fluid infusion set as shown in the video. Aliquot volumes of saline, approximately 1000 mils, were instilled into the target lung until full to its total lung capacity, i.e. until the saline was visible in the double lumen tube connector. The height of the sterile saline installation should be no more than 45 centimetres. This would give a maximum driving force of 45 centimetres driving pressure and would prevent the spillage of saline past the endotracheal cuff into the ventilated but non-lavage lung. Once the fluid column was detected in the endotracheal tube connector, fluid administration was stopped and our trained physiotherapist performed manual chest vibration and chest percussions for five minutes. As the patient was positioned on a total care sport hill run bed, additional vibrations were achieved by activating the bed. After five minutes, the saline was drained out. The initial saline aspirate was sent for biochemical and microbiological analysis. In this patient, the protein level was two grams per litre and the LDH level was 369 international units per litre. During the procedure, the non-lavage lung was ventilated with a peep of 5 centimetres of water. The airway pressure and ventilation was monitored during the procedure. As expected, the tidal volume decreased during fluid installation to the target lung. As the lung filled up with fluid, a tamponade physiology was demonstrated with an increase in CVP and a decrease in blood pressure. Moreover, the oxygen saturation improved on installation of saline to the target lung, possibly due to improvement in VQ mismatch. Oxygen saturation dropped during the removal of effluent from the target lung each time. The effluent fluid gradually had lesser protein load as the procedure progressed. When the effluent returned clear, the therapeutic endpoint was reached. At this point, the protein level of the washed saline was 0 grams per litre and the LDH level was 23 international units per litre. This was achieved after 30 litres of saline washed to the left lung and at the stage right lung lavage, 40 litres was needed. Finally, all the effluent fluids were sucked out using the suction catheter. At the end of the procedure, the double lumen tube was changed to a standard endotracheal tube the patient was ventilated for six hours postoperatively. Furosemide was used to achieve diuresis. At follow-up two months after the procedures, the patient was mobilising up to five miles with no restriction and had a 12% improvement in his TLCO. Chest radiograph appearance was also much improved.